In this video, we're talking about how to begin in the rotary polishing paint correction world. Now, let's get straight into it. What's going on? So glad you guys are here and welcome back to the Wilson Auto Detailing community. If you're a professional auto detailer who wants to become more successful and profitable in your business or just a car enthusiast who wants to improve your detailing ability, then definitely consider hitting that big red subscribe button right below this video. So right now I am on location and I've been doing a full basically makeover to this Audi. I've done an interior detail and exterior detail and I've basically prepared the paint for it to be polished. Now what I'm doing is a two-stage polish to this car. Basically what I want to do is create the beginning of a playlist to teach you guys uh, the best I can through a video on how to actually use a rotary polisher and how to get good results with it. So that's what this is all about. So in this video we're not going to cover everything about rotary polishing but this is simply the beginning steps in learning how to use a rotary polisher so that you can start implementing one in your auto detailing world. So let's just go ahead and kind of define what a rotary polisher is in very simple terms. Basically the difference between a rotary polisher from a DA polisher and most of you probably know this but a DA polisher it actually spins on an axis as well as revolves around that axis and so much like the planets or in the solar system the Sun is what the planets are revolving around but as the planets are going around the Sun they're also spinning themselves and so that's why a DA polisher is actually a little bit safer to use than a rotary polisher because though it's spinning on an axis that spin is being dispersed as it's revolving and so the friction it's creating is being dispersed in a greater surface area and that's why you're much less likely to burn an edge. The rotary polisher does not revolve, it only spins. So it spins on a single axis and so when it's touching something, all of the friction that that spin creates is being focused in one single area and that's why this takes a little bit more know-how to use because obviously the friction, if you're not careful, can burn an edge and create very, very bad things. So having said that, let's break this down a little further. So you may be asking the question, why would I use a rotary polisher this day and age when DA polishers in the detailing industry have become so advanced? And I would say that there's a, probably a lot of reasons, but I would say one of the biggest reasons is because a rotary polisher will allow you to become quicker in the paint correction world by and large in most situations. And the reason for that is because just like we discussed how the friction is concentrated in one area, just like the friction is concentrated in one area when you're using a rotary polisher, all of the bite of the wool pad, all of the heat, all of the polish is also concentrated in that one area, which basically translates to faster correcting. A DA polisher is by and large a little bit slower when you're doing certain kinds of correction because by nature the DA polisher is safer because it kind of mimics your hand. If I was applying a polish by hand, I would probably be doing it like this, spinning my hand and having my hand revolve around a certain surface area. And so for those reasons, it becomes a little bit slower. Now there are pros and cons to a rotary and a DA and I actually like to use them in conjunction, but once again, I'm just speaking in generalities right now. In general, a rotary polisher will allow you to become quicker. Now, what's another big pro to using a rotary polisher? Well, a lot of people kind of nickname their rotary polisher like the heavy lifter or the grunt work polisher because this has, again, the potential in general to do more heavy lifting, to do more aggressive work. And so when you're dealing with cars that are really, really bad or dealing with cars that specifically need like aggressive correction, a rotary polisher in a big way can be a very, very big help because once again, it is a more aggressive approach. But of course, it doesn't have to be more aggressive. You can use it simply to do things quicker. But once again, there's a reason why a lot of body shops use the DeWalt rotary polisher for all of their correction because it's quicker, it's aggressive. They're dealing with a lot of cars. They're dealing with really hammered cars. And so once again, you guys can do the logical deduction. But these in a lot of ways are kind of the heavyweight champions of the paint correction world that can do a lot very aggressively. So kind of what I would like to go ahead and do is just show you guys the condition of the paint that I'm detailing right now, this Audi. Now, once again, I'm in a garage right now, and so it's going to very seriously over flatter the paint condition, okay? If I was in the sun, it would be a lot easier to see, and if I had a bunch of LED, you know, lights on hand, you guys could see a lot better. But this 
this Audi is actually in very, very poor condition as far as the paint is concerned. There are tons of swirls, there's tons of watermarks, there's tons of bug etchings. This Audi has actually never been detailed before, and so on top of it never being detailed and really sitting outside most of its life, it also is black, which you guys know in the detailing world is very, very difficult to deal with. So I pulled actually my phone LED light out, and you guys can see those swirls as I move my phone up and down the paint. You guys can see the swirls. The camera's definitely picking it up. Let me see if I can get a little bit better angle as well, kind of focus it in here, trying to show you guys. So you see where the light's hitting it. See all those swirls, see all those swirl marks. So here's the side of the hood that I have not done with the rotary polisher. You guys can see ton of swirls. I'm really hoping the camera picks it up as well as I can see it in person here. Again, the camera tends to over flatter things, especially on black paint. But you guys see that, and I'm gonna move across and you guys can probably see pretty, con pretty, I don't know, obviously, the line of demarcation. This is the side that has been used with the rotary polisher. Now, what you guys can see here is that m there's, there's still a certain level of swirl marks, but more than anything, there's some hologramming going on. That is something that is very common with a rotary polisher, and when you're really good with a rotary polisher, you may be able to avoid that. I am not really at that level. I don't really care to be at that level, because what I'm going to do after I'm finished using the rotary polisher and doing a one step and using the first step or first round of polish, I'm going to follow up with my Rupes DA and with a glossing finishing polish and what that's going to do is totally eliminate um, another percentage of the swirls but it's also going to eliminate any of that hologramming that happened because of the rotary polisher. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to walk through exactly what I do to use the rotary polisher, how to use the rotary polisher, and then we're just going to check out the before and after results. So because I'm doing a two step polish I am starting with a little bit more aggressive polish this is more considered a compound by and by and large in the detailing world a compound is just a very very aggressive polish it's you know it's an aggressive step before you start polishing is probably the simplest way to put it this is a polish or a compound by show car it's called power bright it's their kind of body shop safe compound I'm really growing to like this polish no I don't get paid by show car this has just become kind of one of my staple products that I'm gonna start using here in the Wilson Auto Detailing World. So I'm just going to shake it up a little bit. And just so you guys know, this is a wool pad that I'm using. The reason I'm using a wool pad is because um, uh, really the, the idea behind a wool pad is that it doesn't heat up the paint as quickly and therefore can kind of deliver a better bite with the polish on the paint. Now this is a 50-50 synthetic wool pad, so it's not completely wool, but it works for me. One downfall with the synthetic wool pad is that it does kind of shed everywhere and so that does become kind of difficult. But I'm overcompensating a little bit with the polish right now just because I kind of want you guys to, you know, get the whole point and make sure you guys understand what's going on so I have plenty of polish to use on this side of the hood. But this is about how much polish I'm using right here. It's not a ton, but it is even more than I would really need to be totally honest. So what I'm going to go ahead and do first is literally just kind of apply it to this half of the paint a little bit, just spread it around so that when I start it doesn't sling everywhere, though I am going to get some sling regardless. Now some of you are asking, why did I not tape off this character line? Why did I not tape off this space? Let me explain that before I actually get into this. When you are using a rotary polisher, yes, it, it would probably be a good risk management you know, step to take to tape off these little spaces right here so that you don't have to do a bunch of polish cleanup. However, you also want to tape off these high marks right here, these, these high points, because when I'm polishing right here, the friction is dispersed because it's a flat surface. When I'm polishing right here, the friction is focused on the peak of this character line because all my polisher is touching is the character line itself. So if you are totally new to rotary polishers, I would absolutely tape this off. The reason I'm not taping it off is because even for those of you who are new who might want to tape this off, eventually you have to pull the tape off anyways to actually polish that high mark. And so I'm just gonna avoid that step and go ahead and polish everything in one step. But once again, I'm gonna be very careful as I'm using this and moving it across the 
paint, I'm gonna be very careful as I start butting up to this high point. And when I get on the other, uh, the other end, I'm gonna start angling my polisher in certain ways, pulling up from the paint to make sure the pressure isn't totally focused on the high point, kind of finessing my way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do this. I'm not gonna speed it up. I want you guys to see it in live action. And after I do it in live action, I'm just gonna kind of explain what I did. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the uh, cord over my shoulder and get started. Now once again guys, I'm finessing my way in the moment and I'm not putting too much pressure when I'm polishing these high points. So I'm being careful, once again, angling up, angling down, pulling up on the pad a little bit as I go across this character line, letting the polish and the pad do the work. Me not trying to put a bunch of pressure down. Actually, as I'm going across the hood like here on these flat areas, I'm just letting the weight of the polisher itself be the pressure. So once again, this isn't rocket science, it's just getting over the fear a little bit. So here we go. <laughs> Where the pattern is normally just like a crosshatch pattern, like 100% of the time when you're using a DA, you go horizontal, vertically. Yes, there is a level of doing that with a rotary polisher. However, once again, because it's not quite as careless maybe as a DA, like you don't have to focus so much with a DA, you can just kind of let it go across any surface, it's not gonna burn an edge. This requires a lot more hyper focus, and because of that, I can't necessarily go in a crosshatch pattern every single time. I'm gonna have to change it up, once again, finessing 
seeing the moment. Here's an angle, here's an angle. Pulling it up, pushing it down, letting pressure off, letting the weight on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off the polish and then we're gonna check it out. But just so you guys know, yes, I have the polisher on about 600 RPM. That's extremely low. Why did I do 600 RPM? Because for those of you who are starting out using a rotary, this is what I did in order to learn. Yes, I had a good teacher, but at the same time when I was on my own, and I think you can definitely learn how to do this on your own, I just kept the polisher at a very low RPM, I put very little weight on it, and I just started playing around with it and started learning the machine, started learning how it reacts to certain painted surfaces, certain high points, certain low points, certain angles, and when you keep it at a low RPM like 600, number one, it's good for a first step in the polishing world because it's not gonna heat it up very fast, it gives it time for the wool pad and the polish to react with the paint, let those abrasives work and actually bite, and that's another reason why I did it. Number two, I just wanted you guys to see that this can be done at a very, very, very low RPM level. So I'm going to go ahead and finish just wiping off this excess polish and then we'll look at the hood. Okie dokie everybody. So this is just the step number one in this paint correction process. This entire hood has been corrected using the step one compound, the Power Bright by Shokar, the 5050 synthetic wool pad and the rotary polisher. Now, a couple things I want to point out. With the rotary polisher, because it's spinning on a single axis, you will probably have some like hologramming left over. That is very, very normal and can very easily be taken care of by the DA. Now, if I was using like a foam pad or a microfiber pad on the rotary polisher, that would change things up a little bit. But with a wool pad, personally, I find it very difficult to avoid getting things like holograms and all that sort of stuff on the paint. We use different words for it in the detailing world. Sometimes people use all that stuff interchangeably. But I just want you guys to see this first result I know it's difficult because I don't have LED lights, but as I go across with the light above on the ceiling, you guys can kind of see the swirl marks, number one, are reduced at a very, very, very high percentage, more than they would be if I just used a DA in this case. In this specific scenario, the rotary polisher is going to lift more of those swirl marks away. It's going to do more of the dirty work, more of the aggressive heavy lifting. That's why I chose to do it in this case. Once again, I'm going to follow up with a DA. So the DA and the finishing polish is going to perfect any of the um, imperfections actually created by the rotary polisher, meaning any like hologramming. And then number two, obviously it's gonna finish and get rid of more of those swirl marks. Now one thing I do wanna point out, and just kind of a, another point to the using the rotary polisher. Because it's like a seven inch pad, and normally rotary polishing pads are a little bit bigger than DA pads, you can buy them the same size and you can change the backing plate, but by and large, they're normally around seven inches. The pad hangs over, as I'm polishing this little panel right here, the pad hangs over this edge. And so if I'm not careful, I'll become hyper-focused on this specific panel, forget I'm hanging over on this panel, forget this character line is there, forget this little space is here, get polish all in there, burn this edge, and actually polish this in a way I'm not trying to, maybe even damage it, you guys can see the polish, the pad actually hung over. I, I wiped it off of here, but it was going all the way down here. So I have to make sure that I'm being aware of where the polishing pad is actually moving, where the polish is moving. I'm not only polishing this, I'm also hitting this. So in the same way I have to be hyper-focused with these character lines, I have to be hyper-focused with all this sort of stuff that I know I'm gonna get without even trying to. And so once again, it's just a puzzle. It's a game of saying, okay, I know this is a little bit more dangerous. I know I gotta get over the fear but if I do, I can start getting great results. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and finish the entire car. I'm gonna use the rotary polisher on every single painted piece, the, the, the roof, the hood, the front, the sides, the back, the trunk, all that sort of stuff. I'm gonna use the same polish. I'm gonna be using my little uh, spur wheel to clean the wool pad itself. You can just put this on the wool pad, turn the rotary polisher on, let this run. This kind of breaks up the polish in the uh, wool pad itself. It'd be a good thing to use or a good thing to buy if you're going to actually invest in a rotary polisher and use a wool pad because it does kind of tend to clump up the polish. This will break it up and give you kind of a maximum uh, correcting ability of your pad. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and come around and show you guys one final before look and again it's just totally going to flatter the paint and there's just really no way of me getting around it. But I just want you guys to understand the rotary polisher in this case is going to speed me up a ton and then on top of that I'm going to uh, undoubtedly get really incredible results because I'm never 
never going to really finish with a rotary polisher. That's not really a strategy I implement in my world. I'm always going to be finishing with a DA polisher. And so really the only point in this first stage right here is to do the heavy lifting, the grunt work, the aggressive compounding work. After this, I can be more detailed. After this, I can do more of the cleanup, more of the glossing. But right now I'm working on getting rid of these swirls. Okay, and the whole entire detail actually is completely finished now. Now, just so you guys know, it is actually the next day because this did take me about two days to finish because I got a little bit of a late start yesterday. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is just go around and show you guys kind of my the best I can the condition of the paint under this lighting and of course it's difficult to pick up everything in the camera but I'm gonna go ahead and just go around the whole car so you guys can kind of see what happened now once again title of this video rotary polishing for beginners so what I did is start with the rotary polisher with the wool pad and then moved to my Rupes DA the first compound I used was Power Bright by Shokar, and then the second kind of final polish I used with a finishing pad on my Rupes DA was Shokar Renew It, which is a high gloss polish. So you guys can see the paint definitely in the shade, it looks you know pretty much perfect. In the sun, yes, there's still a certain amount of swirls, but I just want you guys to kind of see what I'm talking about here. You guys can see even under this lighting, the uh, just kind of lack of swirls that are on the paint. Once again, the reason I used the rotary polisher in this is because the rotary polish polisher with the wool pad is going to be super aggressive plus the compound I used was super aggressive and it was extremely quick and so I get these kind of results with a rotary polisher. Now the only catch is when you're using a rotary polisher the reason and I said this before but the reason I follow up with a DA and kind of why I wouldn't suggest using a rotary polisher without a DA is just because it's difficult to polish and not get holograms with a rotary polisher. It's not a problem if you get holograms with a rotary polisher. The only problem with that would be is if you left it there. So the reason why I used the rotary polisher the first uh, on the first stage of this compound and then I wasn't concerned about the holograms is because the first step was for the heavy lifting. The first step was for the aggressive remove the highest percentage of swirls and imperfections that I can. And then I knew any kind of, not damage, but any kind of imperfections like holograms that the rotary polisher produced I know the DA is going to fix that as well as gloss the paint to a really, really high level. So the main takeaways from this video are number one, it's not really as scary as you think. And so for the beginners out there, the best thing for you to do, kind of like I did in this video, is to get the rotary polisher. I would suggest getting the wool pad and then start on the lowest RPM like 600 because yes, you can still burn edges. Yes, you can still mess things up. But with a low RPM like 600, it's just a very low risk that you're going to actually hurt anything or burn any of the edges. Look at the techniques I used in this video as far as how quickly I moved on those character lines, on those high points in different spaces, angling the buffer, pulling up, pushing more pressure, different things like that. And it really is fairly simple. But again, number two, I would not use the rotary polisher without kind of in conjunction with a DA because the DA is going to fix any of those imperfections that you might have kind of produced. And so it doesn't have to be the Rupes DA. I also love the Grios Garage 6 inch. But again, definitely just use a DA on that second stage nonetheless. So I just want to give you guys like one more look of this Audi because it really does look fantastic. The paint looks incredible. You guys can see it's totally waxed. But look at the, you just can't see any swirls as the light is going across here. You really can't see any imperfections. You can see scratches here and there that are really deep beneath the clear coat. But once again, the paint really does just look flawless. So I'm going to go around one more time just so you guys can get a little kind of glimpse of what I'm seeing in person here. And this is just one of the main reasons, one of the many reasons that I love the rotary polisher. Yes, it's quick. Yes, it's amazing and makes things like headlight restoration very quick, but it also gives you amazing results like this. So check that out. If you guys like this video and it added some value to your life, definitely hit the thumbs up button. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, hook up all that stuff in the YouTube comments below because I always read those and I'm sure to get back to you guys as fast as I can. And if you guys would like to buy anything used in this video, I'm going to hook up everything I used in the YouTube description box below. There will be Amazon links to every tool and every product that I use. So if you want to get your hands on, again, anything used in this video, every single link for those things will be below this YouTube video in the description box. Use my Amazon links because it does give this channel a very small commission. 
donation, but it helps this channel stay alive so I can continue to give out awesome content just like this all the time. If you're new to the Wilson Auto Detailing community, definitely consider subscribing because I come out with videos all the time just like this on products, tools, strategies, communication skills, business skills, and so much more, all in an effort to help the pro detailers become more successful and profitable in their businesses. And on this channel, I share the same strategies that turn my detailing business into a full-time income with only part-time hours. So if that interests you, definitely subscribe. Once again, thank you guys so much for being involved here. And as always, from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing, keep working hard, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Let's go.